Welcome to the video series on research methods and analysis by data and research. In this video, we will discuss the experimental research methods. Basically, there are three types of experimental designs. Between subjects or between groups design, within subjects or within group design, single subject or single case design. This classification is based on the structure of our sample. In between subjects or between group design, the sample will be classified into two or more groups. In within subjects or within group design, the sample will not be classified into groups. There will be only one group. In single subject or single case design, there will be only one participant at a time. Let us go into a little more detail about each of these. First, we will see between groups experimental design. Based on the assignment of the participants, the between group design is classified into a randomized group design and matched group design. Imagine that we are going to conduct an experiment here and I am the principal investigator. We invited some participants for the experiment. The images in this slide are the participants. First, I wrote each participant's name in separate lots, folded them and deposited them in a bowl. After that, I picked one lot from the bowl. The name inside the lot may be anybody from the group. I don't know who it is. I opened the lot and read the name of the participant in the lot. Imagine this is the participant. I assigned the participant to group A. Through the process, I was ensuring the probability that anyone in the sample could be the part of group A. Then I picked one more lot from the ball. I read the name of the participant. The person came forward. I assigned this participant to group B. Through the process, I was ensuring the probability that anyone in the rest of the sample could be the part of group B. In this way, I assigned each participant to either group A or group B. What we have done here is a random assignment. After this, I took a coin. One of you said that while tossing the coin, if the head comes, then group A will be the experimental group. And if the tail comes, B will be the experimental group. I tossed the coin and it was head. Hence, group A was decided to be the experimental group and group B became the control group. Later, if the experiment is a success, we will provide the treatment for the control group also. Hence, we named the control group into delayed experimental group. After this, we conducted a pretest for both the groups. Imagine that we are going to understand the capability of a specific treatment method that can potentially enhance the memory of the participants. So imagine that the pretest was to assess the memory of the participants. Also imagine that this treatment needs a duration or course of 15 days to show an increase in the memory. Both the groups were undergoing through their usual routines. In addition to this, the experimental group got the treatment. The duration or course of 15 days is over now. We'll have the post test now. We can then compare the scores between the pretest and the post test. Suppose the experimental group's score has increased, but that of the control group or delayed experimental group did not increase. In that case, we can say that the treatment had an effect. Now, you might have understood why the control group is called the control group. We are using this group to control any other extraneous factor effect that might have acted to increase the individual's memory. 
apart from the medicine. If there had been such an effect, it would happen to both the groups. Looking in this way, randomized between group experimental design is perfect for making sure about the cause and the effect. However, there is an issue. Sometimes the pretest may influence the post-test scores. We can control that also by using a Solomon four group design. In this, we can have four groups, two experimental groups and two control groups. Among these, a pretest will be done in one experimental group and one control group. Treatment will be provided to the experimental group only. The effects of the usual life will be equally the for all the four groups. Postures will be done for all the four groups. Now, by comparing the postures of the group that did the pretest and that did not do the pretest, we can make sure that there is no carry or effect of the pretest. However, there are situations when we cannot assign the participants randomly. During those situations, we have another method to conduct a between group or between subject experiment. In this method, we will match the characteristics of the participants that may influence their results. For instance, in a memory enhancement treatment, we may match them based on their intelligence score. So suppose we are assigning an individual with an intelligence score of 112 to the experimental group. In that case, we may assign another person with the same or the closest intelligence score to the control group. Like this, we will match the two groups. All the rest of the procedures are almost common for all the between group experimental designs. However, there may be situation in which we cannot conduct research using between group design. Don't worry if you are in such a situation. We can conduct an experiment with one group of participants also. The same group will have to undergo both the experimental and control conditions. We will measure the participants before and after each condition. Hence, we used to call this design as repeated measures design also. Imagine that the same memory experiment we are going to do using within group design. We'll do an initial testing of all the participants. This is just like a pretest. Then they will go through a control condition for a period of 15 days. We'll test them again after this period. In the next 15 days, they will receive the treatment. After that, we can have one more test. We can then compare test 1, test 2 and test 3 and make sure that the memory enhancement occurred only after the experimental condition. However, there is a risk of the first condition's influence over the second condition in a one group within subject design. To overcome this limitation, we can go for counterbalancing. While counterbalancing, we may have another group but going through the experimental condition first and then through a control condition. However, there are situations when we have only a limited sample to conduct experimental research. In such situation, we may go for a single subject experimental design. In this design, we may have only one participant at a time. We will be observing the changes happening to this one participant after the treatment. Later, we may replicate the same experiment with another participant if we would like to confirm the results. If you have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, please write to danr365 at gmail.com.